Hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to keep it kind of, you know, simple today. And I really just wanted to go over, um, I've, I've got a document here, which, which everybody has, where it's the, the top 10 ways to spot a phishing email. So um, I'll give a quick description of what a phishing email is, just for some of you that uh, may not know exactly what it is. But basic, basically, a phishing email is a fake email that you'll get that will come into your email box. But it'll look just like a legitimate email. And what the uh, cyber criminals try to do is they try to, to trick you into thinking it's something that, that is part of your everyday routine. And they know where you go on the internet. So they know if you bank at Regions Bank, you know, they know if you go to Office Depot, and they know when you buy something from Amazon. So what they'll do is they'll target these phishing emails to something that you've done that's in your internet history so that it, make it makes it seem legitimate. So what you want to do is really kind of, you have to kind of go back to really analyzing and reading your emails. And it's kind of up to each individual person to uh, make sure that those emails are legitimate. Because like I said, they are customized to each person. Um, and uh, Adelisa was just telling me about an interesting one that, that one, of, one of you guys got, you know, that's a very tricky one. They keep it very simple or it can be very complex like this one up here. And uh, this is also on the last page, if you can't see this clearly, it's on the last page of, of the uh, document here that we'll take a look at. So uh, again, phishing emails, they're just fake emails that are geared to do a couple things. They either want you to go to a website and log into it, right? So it may come from Regions Bank and it'll say, your account has been compromised or you've had a, a return check. Please click here to log into your account to verify. So it'll say regionsbank.com and you'll click on it and it'll take you to some site that looks just like Regions Bank. It has the logo and everything. But sometimes you might notice that the logo is a little fuzzy. Right? Or, you know, that it's not where it usually is on the page. So there are some telltale signs sometimes when you get to that site. But what the bad guys want you to do once they get you there, whether it's Regions or, you know, Office Depot or Amazon, is they want you to put in your username and password. Now, once you put in your username and password, they kind of got you because you're not really at that site. <clears throat> and unfortunately, most people use the same username, which is our email address, right? Usernames are email addresses, so it's going to be the same pretty much across the board. And then your passwords are usually the same or some derivative of that. So once they have that information, they can then track where you've been on the internet and go to all those other sites. Maybe they'll go to your Gmail site, you know, or they'll go to your Facebook page. And if they go to your Gmail and get into your email, chances are there might be other emails in there that you've gotten from legitimate places like Regents with your username and password or even your account number. So you can see just by them getting access to one or more of your accounts, they can really uncover your whole history. So it's more than just protecting yourself here at work. It's more than just protecting your, your network environment. This really also is about, is about protecting your individual identity, right? Because it doesn't matter if you're at home or here at the work. If they get your username and password, they can really compromise um, your, your individual security. They can even get into your bank at that point transfer funds and things like that, right? So you have to be really careful. So this document that, that I uh, put together here is basically just the t uh, 10 tips for spotting some phishing emails. So I'll just kind of run down through these, show you an example of one, and then I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys might have specifically because there are literally thousands of these different types of phishing emails, and it's impossible to show you each one to, pr to help protect yourself. But if you understand some of the nuances and some of the things that they have in common, you'll be uh, better enabled to, to spot them when they come into your email account. One thing to remember as we go down this list, that any email that you get that has a link in it that says click here to go there, especially from your bank or any online service, Facebook or anything like that, don't do it. Just don't click on that link because chances are high that that link is going to take you someplace bad. So instead, close that email, open up your browser, and specifically type in your bank's URL, right? Or you know wherever it is you want to go on, on, to, on the internet. And that way, you'll know for sure that you're going to that URL. You're going to that legitimate site. Then you can log in relatively safely and check your account and make sure that there isn't fraud or something else going on. So one of the best ways is just don't click on those emails. Just go out and type in the URL manually, OK? Or if you have it saved as a favorite, um, you can do that. But again, if you've received an email of something that you have saved as a favorite, understand that the bad guys may know that. And just you opening that email, it can actually 
go into the uh, go into your favorites in Internet Explorer, and it actually can rewrite the URL in the background of that favorite. Yeah, there's very little security when it comes to that kind of stuff on the desktop, which is why it's up to us individually as users to kind of protect ourselves. There's nothing stopping uh, a script, is what we call it, from running on your computer and changing what that URL is. And you're still going to see it as, I always default to Regions Bank because that's my bank, but <laughs> um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say my Regions Bank shortcut. But behind that, the URL goes to something like this, which is what I'm going to show you guys how to, how to look at too. So the first one is um, the message contains a mismatched URL, which is exactly what this is. So if you look at the back page of the, of the document that you have real quick, what it's going to reference here is this email, which is actually one that I got, and it says, hey, you have a fax, right? Seems legit, looks legit, e-fax, everybody's using e-fax these days, right? The URL here says HTTPS efax.com view fax. Okay, looks legit, right? So, you know, I'll click on that email. It takes me and says, okay, log in. But if you look, if you hover the mouse over that link, this is what actually pops up. And if you uh, reference your document here, it is something that I couldn't even pronounce because it's just a bunch of numbers and letters. And basically, it's some kind of website over in Nigeria somewhere or China or, you know, somebody's bad server. So that's a fake website right there. And that's how you tell. You hover it over it. So don't click on that. Also, when you, if you do click on something, you, you, you know, move too fast for, for your brain to think, oh, I shouldn't click on that, check the URL that actually shows up in the browser, because that will show you, again, that it is a fake URL. Okay, so there's a couple indications there. So that's, that's one of the main ones. Uh, the second one is URLs contain misleading domain name. You have to be careful, too, because even though this says eFax, you click on it, this URL that comes up in your browser may say efax one dot whatever, or may say regionscom dot Alaska or regionscom dot xx two. So you may see a partial legitimate name in there, okay? And that'll also throw you if you're not really paying attention and reading the whole line. So that's another gotcha. So those are the misleading uh, URL domain names. <clears throat> I'm not going to run through all, you guys can read through some of the you know, more details here, so, or else we'll all get bored. Uh, the message contains poor spelling and grammar. This is another one. I mean, these, most of these people that are typing these up probably are not in America, right? They're, they're from overseas somewhere, Russia. So a lot of the times you're going to have an extra R where it shouldn't be. You know, you're going to have some, some names uh, and, and common words misspelled. And I know it sounds funny, but those are very easy ways to tell. Most emails that are legitimate sent out go through marketing departments, they go through spell check, they go through a lot of things before someone sends them out on the internet to make sure and verify that they're right. So if you see something grammatically incorrect or like I said fuzzy images or things like that, then that's another indication that that's not a real email. <clears throat> okay, number four. The message asks you for personal information. So again, like I said, if it asks you for anything personal in the message or after you click the link, close it down, specifically go to that resource, and then put in your personal information. You can be relatively uh, safe that way. Although at the end, I'm going to tell you something else to watch out for, that, that even if you are going to your known secure website, that you have to be, be aware of. So keep that in mind. The offer seems too good to be true. Okay. So we tested this one out in our office, actually. Um, there are actually programs that you can buy on the internet that where you can send out a, a phishing test to your, to your staff. So you control the message and everything like that. So we tested our staff and we sent out uh, a free uh, $100 coupon at Amazon or something like that. And three of our people clicked on it <laughs> and filled out the information. So um, again, if it's too good to be true, free $100 Amazon, and if they're not asking you to sign up for a credit card or take a survey or something like that, you know, then, um, then it's probably phishing. But about the survey thing real quick, again, there are so many rabbit holes with this stuff. Some of these guys are getting smart, and they will, again, try to make it legit and say, hey, take this survey, and then we're going to give you $50 at the, at the end of the survey. If the que and, and you can sometimes do that, but again, you know, verify the URL. But if inside that survey they are asking you for personal information, referencing number three, I think, 
Um, if they're asking you for any personal information at all, don't put it in there. In fact, any survey that you're taking, you really shouldn't put any personal information in on the internet, ever. So that's just kind of a general rule. But especially if it's, uh, if it's a kind of a fishy email. Uh, so if the offer seems too good to be true, like most things, it, it probably is. Um, you didn't initiate the action. So again, your bank arbitrarily sends you uh, an email that says you have fraud on your account or something, that's an example of you not initiating the action. They're initiating to you. They're reaching out. The IRS does not really reach out to you that way, so don't fall for any of that stuff. Any government stuff, any IRS, any tax type stuff, uh -uh, don't, don't do that. Um, you're asked to send money to cover expenses. You know, um, A less frequent but it's one that plays on the family and friends type of thing that, hey, and especially, again, these guys are smart. They already know something about your history or the general history of who you are and where you are, and they may know that you have relatives over in Mexico. Maybe they're on vacation or something like that. So they're going to say, hey, can you send me some money? I got in trouble over here in Mexico, right? You know, so yeah, that, that's it. It's, these aren't just, I mean, a lot of them are blanket, but some of them are very specific to the fact that they know where you are, what you're doing. Maybe they know you're in Mexico and there's a, you know, on vacation because how? I'm on Facebook and I'm going to Mexico next week. <laughs> or I'm in Mexico, here's a big picture of me. Let's get this guy's family back in the U.S. and tell him he's in trouble, right? So, yeah. So, I mean, it's not that hard. It really isn't. And then they have these free... Uh, you guys have probably seen them on Facebook. It pops up and says, get anybody's history for free. You click on there and you put in their name and all of a sudden you know a lot about them. Not everything because they want you to pay to get everything, but you know enough about them to, to scam them, right? So, so don't be fooled just because it has personal information, family, friends, or even work-specific you know, information. Um, and certainly if it asks to send money, don't click on that. If you think it's legit, then... Go to go to the website, uh, you know, and, and log in or pick up and call that person. Um, and and then the one that scares people and uh, my uh, my girlfriend's mom, bless her heart, falls for this one every time. Every time, uh, the message makes unrealistic threats. So this could be now. This one leads into what we call also social engineering. This, this is mostly about email phishing and people trying to contact you electronically. But sometimes they'll actually pick up the phone, right? And they'll call you and say, listen, I'm from Microsoft and your computer's been compromised. Microsoft is never going to call you and tell you that, OK? Um, Nancy. <laughs> so she's done this three times. Three times they've, they've fooled her. Into, into let, and, and what they say is, go to your help section, click on this, type in this URL, and then click uh, share my screen, and all of a sudden the bad guys are on your computer that fast. I mean, 30 seconds. They really push you through it. And for someone that's just not expecting it, they get all kind of rattled, they just click right through without even thinking about it. So if anybody's calling you and threatening you like that, whether it's the IRS, Microsoft, your bank, doesn't matter. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, so unrealistic threat, it says unrealistic threats, but I'm, I'm going to lower that to any threats. Any threats that you get electronically or over the phone. Even if you legitimately owe someone money and, and, they're, and someone's calling you about collecting, uh, collecting that money, and th if they're mean or threatening to you, you don't need to listen to that. And certainly don't let them on your computer or anything like that. Okay, so um, this particular one here is the one that I reference as a picture of, but I'm also going to tell you another personal uh, story of a, of a phishing email. And that is, uh, one day I went out to Amazon and I bought something on Amazon. I don't even remember what it was. But I bought something on Amazon. And two days later, I got an email that said, the product you purchased on Amazon uh, has a recall on it and you need to send it back. It had the actual picture of the item I bought. It had the real ad, like if you go to Amazon and click on it, you know, the, to purchase it. It had that all. It looked completely legit. I scanned that thing, and I couldn't tell anything was fake about that email. So I went, and I, and I opened it up on my phone. And here's another trick. If you open it up on your phone, you're less likely. Now, still don't log into anything on your phone. But if you open it up on your phone, you're less likely to download any damaging spyware or malware to your computer. So if you are so compelled to open and look at this email, do it on your phone, 
okay, because it can't really get you there. So I did that, and once I did that, then I saw where it took me, and I noticed that the URL was a fake URL. But that was a good one. I mean, I was, I was almost ready to click on that thing right from my computer, and I said, wait a minute, I haven't even, I haven't even received this item yet. How can they be want me to, you know, send it back to them? You know, so it, it, it kicked in in a second, but, you know, even as, where, as aware as I am of all these things, that one almost got me because it was personal. I purchased that item, and there it was, and it looked legit. So, uh, you know, these are all just warning, you know, things, and, and it it's just takes time, and collectively, you might go back to your computer, and the first thing you do is click on something. Don't feel bad about that. It's just a process, and you just have to train yourself to, to move a little slower and, you know, be a little more aware of that kind of stuff. So, um, I think that's about all I have. Um, you guys have copies of this, and we've got a couple posters for you that, that Sue is going to put around as, as some reminders, because like anything else, this is, this is really just about reminding yourself and retraining yourself essentially to not trust your email and not trust phone calls that you would get that you would normally trust someone. So, is there any questions? Yes? Could you talk about like, smart questions to either ask yourself or looking at an email or to ask someone who contacted you over the phone to help make yourself more aware? Yeah, and, and again, that, that's very good. Those are self-disciplines, and those are some things that you kind of have to develop, you know, yourself. And, and maybe you, uh, you write them down or you put them by your computer and say, when I get an email, let me check these five things real quick, you know. And after you do it a while, it'll become habit. So that's a, that's a good question. All right, well, thank you, everybody. I, I appreciate indulging my time. Thank you.